Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of A New American Town podcast sponsored by Oz Trails. I'm your host, Stevie, and today we have a very special guest, a three-time mountain biking world champion, uh, Annika Beerton joins us this morning in Benville. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for your time. I know you're, uh, you're real busy these days, so we really appreciate you uh, coming on the show to be with us. Stoked to be here. Awesome. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Start at the beginning. Um, you've been riding for a while. Um, when did you start riding a bicycle? And um, as I mentioned, we have a three-time world champion guest here with Annika. So uh, when did you also take the next step into racing? So I started riding bikes really young. When I was three years old, uh, my mom and dad gave me a bike. Um, I'm born and raised in the Netherlands, uh, so I started riding there. And by the age of four, I did my first uh, BMX race. Wow. Yeah, fell in love with it. Um, we just raced nationally in the Netherlands. Uh, and yeah, from there on, I did all kinds of races. And when I was about 16 years old, I fell in love with mountain biking. I got the opportunity to um, try it out with the team um, that was more in towards like downhill racing in the Netherlands. And they were looking for a girl that, you know, had the skills to try something like that. And I was like, I think I can do that. And I think I like it. So I did it and I fell in love with mountain biking. So that's how I moved from BMX into mountain biking around like when I was 16, 17 years old. Amazing. And in the Netherlands, what was it like being on a bike racing team? And it sounds like maybe one of the first women on your team. Yeah, especially um, for one of the first women more towards the gravity side of mountain biking. There's a lot of cross country riding. So the Netherlands is flat. It's a flat as a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why BMX was really big. Um, and when we see mountain biking over there, it's more like all the cross country riding because we don't have the mountains. But go moving into like more of the gravity side, downhill and enduro, all that stuff. Um, I traveled a lot more, so I went to places like Germany, France, Spain, and uh, yeah, really things started taking off from there. That is amazing. The traveling sounds so cool. Sounds like you got to see a lot of cool places. Um, and Annika, when and how did you uh, decide to come to the states? I decided to move to the U.S. in, that was 2014, 2015. I was um, spending a few winters over here already, uh, mostly in California, trying to get out of the bad weather in the <laughs> Netherlands in the yeah. winter. And, you know, looking for that sunshine and a uh, good environment to train in. And at the time, I signed with Specialized Bicycles. So there in California, I decided to make the move over there for racing, riding, and training. So yeah, in 2015, that was when I uh, officially packed all my bags and moved from the Netherlands to the big USA. Stateside. <laughs> yeah, the American dream. <laughs> and what brought you from California to Arkansas? <laughs> Well, I always knew that California was kind of temporary for me. I'm definitely a country girl and um, California is uh, very busy. <laughs> and I had visit Bentonville in 2019 and again in 2021 um, for the Bentonville Bike Festival. And I just loved it. I, I loved the area, uh, the people, the community, the trails, the riding, obviously. Um, and it, it was on my mind, you know, things getting super expensive in California and mm -hmm. I was really looking for something new, um, change of pace as well and decided to, again, pack up, sell my place and move to Bentonville. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I kind of want to transition our conversation a little bit into, uh, our main topic for today, which is e-biking yes. and e-mountain bikes. Um, so when did you pick up an e-mountain bike and why and how'd you find it? And, um, you've done some racing and put on some clinics for e-bikes now. Yeah. Tell us about some of your experience with that. Um, I got my first e-bike, I think it was about like 2017, 2018. Um, at the time, I was just using it as a tool for training. Um, it was easy for me to get up the hill and really focus on uh, training skills downhill. Um, but then I started using it a lot more in 2020 because I was in a car accident, sustained a concussion and a whiplash, and it got me off the bike for a while. And the only way for me to get back into riding was with the help of an e-bike. Um, that way I could keep my heart rate low. I can just spin the legs and, um, yeah, just a, a way for me to get out on the trail. So, you know, I really, I, I've always had a big love for e-bikes because I think they're just a lot of fun as well. Uh, so yeah, that's when I got really into e-biking. 
And have you done any racing on e-bikes? I did as well. Yes, I almost forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, in 2019, I did the World Championships in Canada. Um, and that was awesome. Uh, it went really well. I won a bronze medal. Amazing. And, um, it, and that was probably one of the hardest races ever. Like from the all the years of racing, that race was so hard. Like even people can kind of laugh at it sometimes or we'll laugh at it and like oh, how can an e-bike race be hard <laughs> but you know when when the engine shuts off and you, and you hit that that limit um, and you're you, pedaling a 55 pound exactly bike by yourself by yourself for over an hour uh and you know racing head to head with other people um it was very intense but it, it was really cool yeah super stoked on that result and uh yeah now as well doing clinics here in town mm -hmm. and really um teaching people uh like also the the bike etiquette side of e-bikes um because they're faster just like teaching people a little bit more about them you know knowing how to like handle the engine the power that comes with it because i feel or i see when i'm out on the trails a lot of people don't really know how to do that they you know they think it, it is like a normal bike it is in to some kind of level but then it isn't as well you know there's a lot more that comes with it riding the e-bike it's heavier it's faster so yeah just you know helping people um be safer on e-bikes and respectful to other people as well on the trail amazing super important um we have loads of riders out on our trail so the more respectful everyone can be the better for everybody um, what's your experience like riding e-bikes in Bentonville? Um, some people may not know that our trails are e-bike friendly. Um, to an extent, we'll go over the class of e-bikes here in a second, but what's your experience been on the e-bike? It's been amazing. Um, the amount of people I see here on e-bikes is a lot. You know, like just going out on a trail, um, you'll see a lot of people on e-bikes. And I think that's wonderful. That's great because there's a whole new group of people that we're getting out on bikes. Um, and also like a different age group. You know, I have a few clients that are 70 plus that are out on e-bikes right wow. now. Which, like how amazing is that? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of respect out on the trails already here. And it's just great knowing that like in um, the parks everywhere here, national parks, you can ride e-bikes, you know? So um, I think it's great. I think you guys are setting such an amazing example to the rest of, you know, the states and the world. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's definitely what we're hoping for out here. And you touched on the national parks. I believe Arkansas is one of maybe two uh, states that allow class one e-bikes in their state parks. Yes. So Arkansas is really kind of, uh, you know, setting a, an amazing example and kind of paving the, the way for that. Um, and I do want to mention, uh, we talked about a bunch of people riding e-bikes on the trails here. Um, just to educate our listeners really quickly. Um, our e-bikes that we allow on our trails are class one e-bikes, which means they are pedal assist. Um, they don't have a throttle. They have a maximum assisted speed of 20 miles per hour. Um, and then the battery will, would you say like shut off at 20 miles per hour? So that's yes, the maximum assisted speed. Um, quick question for you. Do you have a favorite trail to ride your e-bike on in Bentonville? hard question <laughs> i feel like it changes by week here because there's always so many changes and and so many awesome trails i recently really been enjoying uh matt hatter nice um, and then they recently re, re redone a cease and desist in kohler mm -hmm. um and then all the trails off of the castle so basically i've named already quite a few of them yeah. now <laughs> but uh yeah everything is just so fun the riding here is is it's you know i describe it as definitely as fun it's it's just very enjoyable amazing um i noticed the correlation you named a lot of downhill trails <laughs> yes I, I can see that correlation in your background in your in your riding and racing that's funny um, what will you be up to next year? Do you have any big events or big clinics going on that are coming up next year? Um, yeah, I'm going to keep um, growing my coaching business that I've been kind of setting up here for the past couple of months. And it's been going really well. And I've really been enjoying it. Um, you know, like I just said, like get more people on bikes and in a safer way as well. So next year, I'll do more camps and clinics and um, keep keep things rolling here and really focus on um yeah, all kinds of all kinds of riders, you know, even kids, uh, adults, people over 70. Yeah, like, if you need help, you know, I'm here to help and uh, get people on bikes and just get them stoked on it, you know, because like, I feel like riding has always been such an outlet for me as well. And, you know, passing that on and passing on what I've learned over the years of racing, 
traveling, riding, um, passing that on to either the next generation or just somebody that wants to get, you know, on a bike mm -hmm. uh, and help them out and get them stoked on it. So, yeah, we'll keep going with that for sure. And there's always so much happening here in town. <laughs> so I don't think I'll ever get bored. So that's, it's just amazing. I love it. Um, for anyone who might be thinking about visiting, um, renting a bike is always a good way um, to perhaps not have to travel with all your equipment. Um, and so if anyone was looking to come to town and rent an e-bike, do you have any advice for them? Maybe it's their first time on an e-bike or maybe they just want to be able to see more in the time they have while they visit here. Do you have any pointers for anyone like that? Yeah, I think it's an e-bike is great for that. And especially like you said as well, like if you come here for the weekend and you want to explore, you want to see more than just a few miles of trails, you know, go into town, find a place where they rent the e-bikes um, and just start with the green trails and move up from there. Um, we often see people get very excited and hit maybe a black trail <laughs> and they're not ready for it yet. So, you know, like start there. There's so many awesome green and blue trails here uh, to explore. And then we got the Bella Vista area, which is amazing for like more beginner riders as well. There's so much variety everywhere here. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, just go rent a bike and an e-bike and slowly build up from starting on the green trails. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things I learned very early on when I got my e-bike is that you still have to treat it like a bicycle. You don't treat it like a motorized bike or like a, like a motorcycle. You still have to shift and you still have to tell it what to do and it will listen to you as long as you give it the input and tell it what, what you're trying to do. You can't really treat it like... A motorcycle you can't go oh i'm gonna stay in the in the smallest cog and go up this hill and um so that was something i learned pretty and quickly just treat it like a bicycle just like you would any other regular bike and exactly. it'll take you exactly where you want to go yeah and that's yeah. probably the most important thing to tell people like treat it like a bicycle mm -hmm. like you still need to shift uphill mm -hmm. you know when you 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 feel like the the engine is struggling shift it into a lighter gear because you need to yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> and it will help you a lot as well so yeah just like the shifting part is so amazing like uh, i mean important it's just like a regular bike mm -hmm. you know just treat it like you said treat it like a regular bike it's an assist so it will yep. help you uh uphill um and uh yeah just like we said earlier as well just be respectful when you're out on the e-bike especially if you're in a big group with e-bikers I notice sometimes as well you know they come flying by uh especially when they're with a big group mm -hmm. um be respectful slow down you know you're on the faster bike absolutely and it's okay to slow down for a couple of seconds when you have a family that is enjoying the trail mm -hmm. as well um so hopefully you know people will We'll keep respecting that more and more. Absolutely. Um, is there anything else you want to add on or anything else you'd like to talk about while we have you here today? Um, I just, I've been enjoying it here. It's been amazing. You know, it was a bit of a, 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 a switch. I had to flip when, you know, made the decision to pack everything up and, you know, move to Bentonville and not really sure. Like I knew two people here. I was <laughs> like, I, I messaged them on Instagram and I was like, hey, you're thinking about moving to Bentonville. What do you guys think? And they're like, do it. And I was like, of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it was like, okay, when you don't know a lot of people, it's like, you know, you, you, you jumping into something mm -hmm. very unfamiliar. And um, from the moment I got to town and uh, it's been really amazing. Yeah, I think like it's been it's been very refreshing, like a, a, a breath of fresh air being in a community where everything is not only about cycling. There's so much more here. Um, I think the outdoor activities and there's always something happening in sports, either if it's like uh not only cycling, but a lot of other running events or swimming events, whatever mm -hmm. is happening. It's, it's so awesome to be in a community where sport and mental health and all of that is so important. And you just notice that here in town, too. I would say, like, people are so happy and friendly here, but there's <laughs> a reason for that because they live in an awesome place. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, no, I've been loving it, and I'm hoping to see um, more and more people out on the trails. Wonderful. Um, well, lastly, uh, for our listeners... Tell them where they can find you online and on social media so they can keep up with your awesome adventures. <laughs> yes. So my personal social media is Annika Beerton uh, on Instagram or Facebook uh, website as well. And then my coaching business is Crank It Up MTB. Uh, you know, keep cranking up your skills. Uh, same thing. Got my website, got Instagram. So you can find me on there. Uh, give me a shout if you want some help. I'm here to, you know, anybody help anybody out. So 
Amazing. And everyone listening, if you ever see Annika out on the trail, she's usually wearing a jersey with her name on it. <laughs> Be sure to give her a wave, give her a shout, say hello, ask her how she's doing. Yeah, give um, me a high five. <laughs> absolutely. Annika, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You can find Oz Trails on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and on OzTrails.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of a New American Town podcast sponsored by Oz Trails, and we'll see you out on the trail soon.